Hi everyone, this is Jason here from Nathaniel. In this lesson, we are basically going to look at cadences. Okay, uh, a cadence in music. Well, there are a lot of definitions for it, but the way I understand a cadence is it's a very simple chord progression, like a chord progression which is not so big to be called as a chord progression. Maybe it's just like two chords or three chords or four chords. Classically, I think it's two chords, but I'm just going to title this lesson as cadences so that we put in a lot of things into one lesson okay and uh, this lesson assumes that you just know your notes your chords major and minor your intervals so it's not i would say it's not an entirely beginner lesson so if you're a beginner student watching this well the ideal recommendation is to check out or be part of the foundation piano course in any of its forms you could do it either on our youtube page itself there's a link you know you could always uh, sign up for one of those things or you can reach out to to nathaniel via a form and learn music as a in a foundational manner as a beginner or anyone who wants to develop like a step by step kind of approach right so this lesson is all about cadences as i said earlier it's about small chord progressions sometimes just using two chords should be more than enough and uh, well i'll also give you a few chord progressions which have three chords maybe even one the last one will have four chords okay so let's get cracking if you haven't already it'll be great if you could subscribe to our channel hit the bell for notifications support us on patreon you'll also get all the notes notation whenever relevant for all of our lessons on youtube uh, present future and past okay so let's get cracking so the first cadence which you find very commonly is what they call as the authentic cadence an authentic cadence is nothing but a five going to one so if you're in the key of g major the five of g is d so you play the major chord of the five and then resolve it to the tonic chord which is the one so in the g major scale the tonic is g so f five going to g one five going to one now what we do with the authentic cadence is we could also add a seventh embellishment you could do that's root third fifth major then you add the dominant 7th which is C you can play that wherever you want you can do it up there down here which is nice or if you're in, in on an inversion like this you could find the 7th somehow now there are lots of uh, kinds of these authentic cadences that, that you know which you'll find you can always do a wikipedia as well of all this cadence stuff but um well the the way i'm kind of looking at it is authentic five to one think of it as five going to one get used to a five of any scale resolve it to the one and that's your authentic cadence so when you do use these cadences it can really inspire a melody that's what i'm going to attempt to do in this entire lesson so if you do it's kind of the reason why you make a melody in the first place with chords you have two of them and you kind of find a way to get the two chords to work with each other dynamically so that's why you use melodies so actually in this instance you're using melody to highlight the chord and go from one chord to the other in a in the smoothest possible way so authentic seventh going to the root so you could practice that on your other keys a great tool is the circle of fifths if you practice it around that circle well it is a circle of fifths so there you have it you can practice your 
authenticators in in including the next one which we are going to see using the circle of fifths so lot on the circle of fifths has already been covered on our youtube channel check it out in the description so the next cadence for you one of the cadences i have already done a video of i have done a series on this cadence it's what we call as the plagal cadence so the plagal cadence as noted long long ago by the classical musicians is a 4 going to 1 so a 4 let's say on the key of g will be c major you go there also call the amen cadence because at the end of a general church hymn you'll you'll say amen 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 in whichever part you choose because you are ultimately singing the chord tones of the plagal cadence and that's why they call it the amen cadence so it's a four going to one so you go right and lot of songs seem to end on this especially if you have a gospel song you know even a song like na 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 let it be yeah. right or every rose has its thorn and all all these other epic rock ballads also do a lot of the plagal so you may also look at a cadence as what it's defined maybe in a wikipedia or a theory textbook they call it the ending so maybe you have other chords running uh, alongside it or prior to it and you use these two chords at the end of the cycle like na 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 let it be right so something like that would be the plagal right so the other way we would use our plagal cadences well traditionally as i said earlier it's four going to one you could also do a four minor going to the one major this is a very beautiful sound so if you take the key of g again the four is c normally the amen cadence was amen that's major four going to major one but what if you did a minor four going to the major one this is a beautiful sound right it's so nice that you can just use these two chords alone as your melody like very good if you're doing uh eastern music or you know even indian music if you want to add some chords this plagal cadence or ca the thought of cadences in general is great because it it's just two chords so it won't mess up the existing melody which is already there and the plagal you can even do four major na 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 do it to four minor na 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 you can do that four major four minor resolve back to the tonic you can even do something like embellish the minor fourth with a sixth we call this the minor sixth chord right so on our youtube channel we've done a playlist on my favorite chords of all time the minor sixth is definitely up there and uh, you'll find all the music which i've composed using some of these really really interesting and rarely used chords so check out that playlist as well right so that was the plagal we've looked at the authentic we've looked at the plagal and then something which is very important or interesting to consider is the next cadence called the deceptive cadence the deceptive cadence is where you do the 5 and instead of going to the uh, major tonic you do the minor right so you go 5 major of five dominant seventh instead of going to that you go to la da da and you have two of the common notes so it kind of works it really works actually da re da re 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 and it's called deceptive i guess because you're you're assuming that it would be da 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 pa 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 you end on major but you deceive it or you have this deceptive cadence by going da di da da ro great for changing the section of your song maybe you want to go to the bridge 
from a chorus to something very different. You could do the deceptive cadence, right? So what is the deceptive again? We go 5 to 6 minor. So in the key of the G major scale, what is our 5? Your D major. Normally, using the authentic cadence, it would go to G. But using the deceptive cadence, you ask yourself, what is the 6 minor? which is E minor, or you ask yourself, what is the relative minor of G major, which is the 6. So, what I like to do is, I use you can use both the cadences together in one progression, like... Or change it now... end with a plagal or something. So learning cadences is also a great way to look at or revisit chord progression. Sometimes if you say, oh, I want a 1-5-6-4 loop, then you're going to use it for the whole bit. You're going to use it for verse. Then you do something else for the chorus. But if you combine these small pieces, cadences together, authentic, authentic, maybe deceptive at the third bar and then plagal at the fourth bar. So you get yourself this huge chord progression serving the section of your song and also works great for the lyrics. If you want something more assertive or something more painful, maybe you do the deceptive cadence at line three. And you end with a plagal taking them back home and do the authentic later. So you see how we are using these words. It's very important that you don't overthink the words or get scared by the words. We say authentic because it's two chords, five to one or five, seven to one. We say plagal because it's four to one or four minor to one. We say now deceptive because it's uh, this thing, five to six. Right? You're deceptive. That's the deceptive cadence. So you have other cadences as well in music. Yes, there are a lot of them. But I'm just going to kind of go on a tangent and try to tell you something maybe of unofficially, which I call cadences. Uh, maybe they are called cadences. But now we try to build up, mo add more chords to the equation. Okay. The next one, which I think you need to learn is, yes, the 5-1, which is authentic you do something before the 5 and that's generally going to be your 2. So you have the 2-5-1 major and you have the 2-5-1 minor used very commonly in jazz music to a point that those three chords work as a pack. So might as well also put them into this topic of cadences uh, as you're learning it as a student. Because when I teach cadences also in a classroom, if we keep doing two chord cadences, immediately you get the question, you have the doubt, why can't I add a third chord? Well, in jazz music and in a lot of other forms of music, the 2-5-1 is the main entity of that music. So if you take 2-5-1 in the key of G major, the 2 is your A, so the 2 becomes a minor chord, so 2 minor... 5 major and then you resolve it to the tonic so it's kind of authentic because it has that 5 going to 1 but preceding that is the 2 so da, da, da. one more time da, da, da. and you build your tune around that da, 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 Play the one a little longer is usually what we do. Something bluesy. Right? It's very nice to just play this cadence and come up with something. In 
case i didn't come up with something that's already the maroon 5 song anyway the other option would be what i use more often in my music the minor 251 okay and we've done an entire playlist called minor chord progressions do watch that that'll be a great follow up to this video minor chord progressions start with that 251 package so to get a minor chord progression you want to be on the harmonic minor scale harmonic minor and now when you observe your chords it will be two diminished and then five dominant seventh you could even add that flat nine to the chord and then the minor color up these chords it it can be a minor 7th flat 5 retaining the diminished quality at the flat 9 end on minor so you have 251 major you have 251 minor those are again very very cool cadences to 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 practice and to create music just thinking of the set of chords will be very cool okay let's move on to the next cadence right so the next cadence is something you can add to your music just to make things epic right we use this word epic a lot i have no idea even what it means but we just know what it feels like to say epic that was epic you know right so before we look at the epic cadence you can build up to what will appear to be epic by just starting off with diatonic stuff you can do major 1 go to the perfect fourth major that'll be plagal or na 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 authentic or da da de 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 deceptive maybe you'd like to also do na na four going to five which we call as the half cadence na 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 even 4 5 1 is common la da 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 de. so all of that is diatonic but if you want to sneak in something as we call epic with a lot of the students who who, who, who keep learning with me da 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 de. we've sort of arrived at this word da 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 do 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 so that's it just elevates the song da 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 do de. very brave and what did i do there so the epic cadence as i'm calling it for now maybe there's another name for it but i'm just calling it epic so da na 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 that's your 6 flat major so with respect to g e flat is the 6 flat so you do 6 flat major then 7 flat major and then one major so these are all major chords actually so you go so you do diatonic stuff part of the scale that's what adds that vibe the chorus na 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 do 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 back to the world normal world so when your diatonic is just normal chords normal cadences and then this epic cadence can kind of really add to the party right guys so i'd like to leave you with one more very very common cadence which we have in music which is i think the I don't know what to call it really. I'm just going to call it the modern pop or the EDM cadence if you will. So what happens with a lot of modern pop music especially bands like Chainsmokers or what Coldplay has become after a lot of years uh, you could put them into that category is you have this progression going very often. <laughs> So what we did in the epic cadence was six flat, seven flat, 
one major but with the modern pop or the EDM cadence as we may call it you do 6 flat 7 flat and end on the one minor so that just makes it sound a little bit more popish you hear a lot of this stuff eventually ending on the minor so you have epic cadence and then the modern pop cadence which we are calling now you can give it your own name if you'd like and i think that's about it for this lesson uh, however i'm going to leave you with one more cadence which i think uh, <clears throat> is very famous and i think it's also called that if i'm not mistaken so the last cadence for this lesson would be what we call as the andalusian cadence used a lot for i guess flamenco music you know a lot of spanish music seems to have this let me play you the the thing okay so how it works is it's a four chord cadence you start with the minor one minor then you do the seven flat major which we discussed earlier that's f so g minor f major 6 flat major it's like epic cadence going down da, 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 and you end on the 5 which is a nice chord because then it pulls back to the da, na, 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 goes on and on so a lot of you could give it a flamenco vibe right or you can look at like great song like you say hit the road jack hit the road jack I won't you come back no more no more no more no more right also it, it, this is definitely the chords used in the song dammaru dam so it's you can call it the dammaru dam cadence the hit the road jack cadence or the official term which is called as the andalusian cadence so that's one more thing i kind of like about cadences as a subject because they all have really weird names to a point that you have to remember them authentic plagal andalusian and now i've added a couple to the party epic modern pop and whatever else right so i hope the idea of cadences will inspire you at whichever level you are at on the piano or music in general and i hope that it can allow you to structure your musical ideas within these compartments of chords sometimes you always tend to go back to the simpler things when you're trying to compose music and how simple can music get when you just look at two chords or three chords or in the andalusian case four chords right so you look at cadences depending on the words or the lyrics you're trying to write more often than not you look at it in a genre based system or you just look at it as an interplay you try to play around with your cadences and that's how you kind of tell stories even as a writer you try to look at building tension building uh, you know resolution as we have even in music so like any dynamic art form you're trying to narrate a story through in this case through chords and notes right so i've talked about all of this on the key of g we will have all of this written out for you on our patreon page so do head over to the patreon channel and get yourself a copy of this entire detailed pdf of whatever we've talked about in our cadences chapter and also don't forget to hit the like button share the video if you can leave us a comment with stuff you'd like to learn most of your comments have actually given birth to these lessons which you which we've put out of of late so we, we're really inspired by you guys to 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 share with us what you would like to learn next and so on and so forth and it's definitely helping the channel grow right again this is jason here from nathaniel and before i wind up if you found the lesson a bit too advanced for your current skill level there is always our foundation piano course which includes two books which have piano theory and it includes a lot of lessons which will be growing as we keep recording them and putting them out so there's a members only foundation portal you could also consider supporting the channel as i said earlier patreon or you can hit that join button on youtube support our channel and also gain something in the process 
right again jason here from nathaniel thanks a ton for watching cheers